I don't know about you, but I always found it interesting to sit back and listen to how much money people make. And as a kid, I used to always wonder that about people. You know, especially when you look at what they have, the cars, the clothes, the houses, I used to wonder how much they made only to get shut down with, don't be worrying about how much they're making. You're not supposed to talk about money. That's rude. But you know me, I have an opposing view for just about everything, so let's talk about it. If we want to get real about money, we need to talk about how much money you need to be making at every age. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth, where I show you how to save money and make more money, all while making yourself better every single day. Let's get into this video. By the way, I'm sure you could relate to my fascination when it comes to how much money people make, because if you didn't, videos like these wouldn't get millions of views. Now, despite that fascination, whenever people talk about how much money they make, their salaries and ages are all over the place. So we have to ask ourselves this question. How much money should I be making at my age? Because we need to know where we stand. I've asked myself this question since I was 18 years old, but of course, as most of us are brought up, we grow into a world that doesn't find it acceptable to talk about how much money we earn. So what happens is that cycle continues. And while that's going on, we ask ourselves that question and we don't get a clear answer. So I'm going to answer that question right now because you can Google search all you want to, but I know from experience that you won't get the answer you need. And I'll prove that throughout this video. So we're going to start at the ripe age of 21 years old, and we're going to go all the way up to 34 years old for the first age range. How much money should you be making? This is where it gets interesting because I'm about to give you an answer so unpopular that you probably never even heard of it before. When asking yourself this question, you really have to think about what you want. And when you're in this age group, you don't always know what you want because you're just getting out on your own for the first time and you're still figuring things out. I can tell you what most people make in this age group. And as a matter of fact, we're going to do that right now. And since I have about a 50-50 audience of men and women, I'm going to break this down by gender. I figured y'all might appreciate that. I just got my computer out. So let's break it down. As you can see, men between the ages of 20 to 34 years old make anywhere between $31,980 to $46,436 a year. And women in the same age group make anywhere between $28,496 to $40,508 a year. And by the way, I'm just going in the order of the article, so don't get bent out of shape if I don't say your gender first, ladies. Now anyway, I'm just going to keep the numbers up here on the screen so you can see the numbers compared to what I'm saying. So check this out. How many places in America can you live off of these salaries and not live paycheck to paycheck or move in with the roommate? Those are rhetorical questions and honestly, there's nothing wrong with any of those numbers and there's nothing wrong with doing what you have to do to survive in this world because that's what adults do. But I'll tell you what I think when I see these salaries. The first thing that comes to my mind is this. If I'm a 21 year old who just graduated from college and I'm Google searching how much money I should be making at my current age and then I come across this article and my first job offer is $40,000 a year, I'm gonna be thinking, oh, I'm good. I'm making more than most people my age. I, I'm, man, I'm good. And the problem with that is we're using the wrong metric when we talk about how much money we should be making because we condition ourselves to become satisfied with the numbers we see on the screen just because most people are making this kind of money. Now, if you look at most people, how many of them are happy? I want you to do this real quick. Think about how much money you're making right now. Okay, and now that that number's in your head, I want you to pause the video and ask yourself this question. Am I happy? Go ahead and pause the video. I'll be right here waiting for you. Okay, cool. You're back. Now, whatever your answer was, this part of the video is going to be extremely valuable. Instead of thinking about how much money you're making compared to your peers, it's way more important to think about how much money you need to sustain the lifestyle that you want and how you make your money. You'll find that it doesn't take millions of dollars and it doesn't require you to become a rocket scientist or a brain surgeon to achieve that. What we need within this age range more than anything is clarity around what we want. I personally had to fall on my face several times consistently for a couple of years before I truly understood what I wanted because I never thought about it before. And I can't tell you what you want in life, but I can give you a pretty good baseline. Happiness. I'm happy when I know I can put all my bills on auto pay and put money in my savings and in my investment accounts every single month and still have money left over. I'm happy when I know that I can support myself alone without having to rely on anyone else. And I'm happy when I know that the way that I'm making money is fulfilling and I'm not just doing something I hate for a paycheck. So I'd encourage you to start doing this even before you start getting paid. Look into the cost of living in your city. Go to grocery stores and look at the prices. Look at how much money you can expect to be spending on an apartment. How much money does it cost to go out and have a good time in your area? Because I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen if you don't. You'll face the exact same reality that I faced when I first got started. I was like, oh, I'm making all this money thinking I had it going on. 
but I blew my money on my first place that was way more expensive than I needed it to be. So now you have less opportunities because you've committed your money to something that doesn't even make you happier. Like my townhouse with two bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms didn't make me any happier than my one bedroom apartment that I have right now. You feel what I'm saying? So when you get the idea that having a salary within this range is good money just because it's on the higher end and you decide to go out and get yourself a new truck or you go shopping every weekend getting luxury items, shoes, purses, makeup, video games, that adds up. And what happens is we think those things will bring us happiness, but that happiness goes away. When a new game comes out, when your shoes are worn out, when other financial obligations get in the way, you soon realize that your decisions cause money to actually leave your pockets despite how much money you're making. And that's what I talk about in my Money Mistakes video. And it's because I think we've developed a culture where treating yourself is more applauded than working hard and planning ahead. But instead of treating yourself to a good time or something that's temporary, why not think ahead and treat yourself to the life you've always wanted? I'm gonna let you in on something. When I was 22 years old, I was making over $80,000 a year and I hated my life. That salary is way off the charts when you look at this article. That's, that's good, right? Not because if I was like, oh, I'm good. I can treat myself. I can act a fool. I'll be looking sick right now because I would have relied on that salary and I would have been so dependent to the point where I was like, well, you know what? I'll keep going through this because, hey, I'm still making more than most people in my age group. But what's the point of making all that money if you're miserable? You know what that's called? Golden handcuffs is when you become attached to something that you literally hate doing just because of the benefits that it offers you. They can be just as demanding and disrespectful as they want, but you better behave if you want this money to keep coming. What does that sound like to you? Because let me tell you something else. I've developed and maintained pretty good money habits throughout my 20s and my salary has only increased every year and I'm still not where I want to be and I'm definitely not rich. So in my opinion, when you're in this age group, you need to make enough money to fully support yourself. I'm not saying not to have a roommate. I'm saying if your roommate needs to suddenly leave or something happens like that, you've got to be prepared for it. And I think you should be making enough to put at least 20% of your income into your savings account. You know, enough to build up a good cushion and emergency fund so you can have a good safety net so you can ride out a storm one day if you need to. But most importantly, when you're within this age range, it's crucial to get to the point where you have enough disposable income to fuel your dreams. I'm talking about your dreams to go to the Philippines for a month or a couple of months instead of a week. I'm talking about your dreams to start a business or even if your dream is as simple as sleeping in all day and watching Netflix without missing a paycheck. By the way, funding those future dreams includes funding your retirement. This is the age group where your biggest asset and your biggest form of currency is your foresight. I've spent thousands on myself to become a better man, better at business, and just an overall more knowledgeable person. And those attributes that I've been able to build based off of that have allowed me to earn more. I've also invested thousands of dollars into the stock market, but when I invested in myself and in my dreams, that paid me a lot more. And guess what? I'm just getting started. And I'm proud to say that not just because it makes my pockets bigger, but because it gives my life that fulfillment that I've been craving. And I know I've spent a lot of time on this age group, but most of my audience is in this age group. And I also think that this is the most important time to take advantage of what I'm saying, because you would be surprised at the advantage you get just from learning something early on. So anyway, here's the last thing I want to say about 20 to 34 year olds before I move on. Think about marriage, kids, school. All those play a role in life and all those wonderful things come with the price tag that I don't think a lot of us think about. And that's going to lead us into the next age group of 35 to 44 years old and we'll call this the middle age group. Back to my computer again. Now, most men in this age range make about $58,916 a year, while most women in this age range make about $47,216 a year, about an $11,000 difference. Now, before I get into this, I want to piggyback off of a very important point I made earlier. We're getting to the point where we're telling our kids that they shouldn't expect this type of money, you know, mid 40s to high 50s, until they've hit the age of 35 to 44 years old. I remember my first ever job offer, and by the way, I don't care who you are, if you're just now graduating from college or trade school, businesses and corporations know that you think these types of wages are good, which means they can use these wages against you. Stay woke now. But on a serious note, they really do use your inexperience to lowball you and your pay. Case in point, I got a bachelor's degree in industrial engineering technology with two certifications and a minor, and these fools who shall remain nameless tried to pay me $16 an hour for a technology management position. Are you out of your mind? Now, I didn't say that, but the way I was looking at the hiring manager, he knew what it was. He knew what I was saying. I gave him that stank face like, 
But of course, I didn't really know what to do at first, so I was talking to my family about it, and I just remember talking to my dad and telling him, you know, the position sounds really promising, but something just doesn't feel right. And what didn't feel right was the fact that they were going to pay me well under what I was worth. I was met with, well, it's okay, it's just your first job. Yo, well, I didn't just bust my tail for the last four years, go to internships, make cool devices, win robot races, and go 30K in debt just so I could get paid under what I'm worth. So I'm grateful that I had that kind of intuition and foresight at 21 because I definitely turned that job down. And if I didn't, I could have been accepting much lower pay than I'm making right now because of my belief around money for the rest of my life. Now, what I see in a lot of folks between the ages of 35 to 44 is a scarcity mindset, and that goes directly against most financial goals out there. You wonder why as you get older, your goals and your dreams shrink down to the size of your income. This is why. It's the same reason why if you go into a room full of kindergartners and ask them how many of them are artists, every hand goes up. You go into a room full of 12th graders, ask the same thing, and watch two hands go up out of 20 people. And it's because we inherit our financial beliefs. And this is actually true for every single human being on earth. One of two things happens. Either you inherit these financial beliefs and you live with them for the rest of your life, or you inherit these financial beliefs and you unlearn them as life goes on. So what this turns into is a bunch of seasoned adults that the young adults in the age range of 20 to 34 go to for advice. Bro, if you don't know what you want in life or how to get it, how in the world are you going to sit there and guide someone else? See, I'm trying not to get started tonight, but I got to let y'all know something. This is the age where you done settled down, you know what I'm saying? You're probably married with kids and just, just watch my video about how much money you should have saved by your age. It actually lines up pretty well with this one. But what I'm saying is you're at the age where you have limited mobility because the decisions you made in the past start to weigh you down. And this could either be a good or a bad thing. Most of the time, it happens to be a little bit of both. And whenever it is bad, it's because most people in this age group ironically haven't followed the steps that I talked about for the 20 to 34 year olds. And that's to pursue your happiness because when you're happy, you're grateful. And when you're grateful, you make better decisions, you attract better people into your life, and honestly, more money. So when you don't do that, you make decisions to buy things that you think will make you happier, but in reality, they don't. I'm sure when you get that new Mercedes or Range Rover, you're ecstatic at first because you can't wait to pull up in it. But then when you find out that oil change costs five times as much as it would for a Toyota Corolla, that happiness drops real quick. Look, that's the age group that does this mess. You know when you're growing up as a kid and you ask your parents to stop by McDonald's and they look at you and they're like, they look in the back seat like, you got McDonald's money? Now the question should be, do you have Mercedes money? Me and my brother kept cash on us because we got tired of that question. Yeah, we got McDonald's money right here. Pull up. What costs most people in this age group is the short-term mindset and the idea that things will make us happy. We think that a 4% raise at work will make us happy until we realize that inflation just went up by 4% and now we realize you haven't made a dime more. So my thought with this age group is this, you need to make enough money to sustain your lifestyle and to fund your retirement and you need to be happy with how you're able to fund both of those things. But on top of making enough money for both of those things, you need to make sure that you're allowed to have this one thing that used to be foreign to me, a work-life balance. Because you will never get time back. This video ain't just about how much money you're making, it's also about how much time you have. Obviously, I'm not in my 30s or 40s yet, but that time could be so valuable if it's used to pour into people you care about. Telling them that you've had to unlearn some things you thought you knew about money. Telling your kids, your wife, your husband, your family, your community, how important it is to be financially literate. You can talk about personal development and build a better world one person, one family at a time. I know I just got kind of deep there, but what I'm sharing with you is a future that I see See happening if we could just get our mess together and understand what is really important in life. Because the way things are going nowadays, half of us won't be able to retire because instead of putting our money into 401ks and Roth IRAs, we're out here buying things that buy short-term happiness without realizing these bad money habits prolong the amount of time you have to work. To the point where you have no choice but to work well into your 70s just to survive in this world as prices continue to go up. I want to have time in the future. Time to rest, time to take care of myself, time to build myself up so I can help build other people up. I don't want to be bound to the consequences of mistakes that I made 10 years ago, but that's where a lot of us are heading. And once we hit our mid 30s and late 40s, we start to feel like it's too late and we get complacent and comfortable with our good paying jobs. So what do we do? We stay put. But as I just told you, you have to figure out what good money is for you because I'm telling you right now, even the highest number on this range won't stand a chance in California, Atlanta, or New York. Before I get to the next age group, I have a question for you. How much money do you want to be making a year? 
No, seriously, like without throwing some crazy random number out there, how much money do you want to be making a year that you feel is comfortable? Because I checked out this one video and the people said numbers like 80,000, 100,000, 200,000, 350,000. That was their perfect number. They're not saying millions. So think about it because I guarantee you it's a different number than what you're making right now. I know mine is. And with that said, if you remember a few minutes ago when I asked you to pause the video and think about are you happy or not, if you're not happy, I want you to think about what would make you happy. Because they can say money won't buy happiness all they want to. And whether you agree with that or not, the bigger issue is what is done with the money. And all that boils down to is understanding your priorities and what you find important in life. One more question and we'll get to the information, I promise. How do you want your finances to look when you're between the ages of 45 and 65? Again, that's a rhetorical question, but I want you to think about it because I asked you that question in that specific way for a reason. So check this out. The amount that people make in this age range doesn't really change that much. In fact, it actually goes down. Which actually brings me to my point. I've always been under the impression that the older you get, the more money you make. But no one ever told me, hey man, actually when you hit the ages between 45 and 65, your earnings start to decrease a little bit. I mean, seriously, look at this. I mean, I'm sure I'm not the only one who thought that. Has, has anyone ever told you that? Now that number accounts for switching jobs, maybe taking on a lower paying, less demanding job, but also retirement. This is actually the age where a lot of people haven't necessarily saved or invested enough so that they could continue to make what they were making earlier, but maybe what they're making right now is a little less than what they were making, but it's able to get them by for the next 20 to 30 years. And of course, that's just me looking at numbers on the screen and giving my take on what's happening. But I come into contact with a lot of people of all ages all the time. And what I'm saying gives these numbers a story that we're never told when we're younger. So we spend most of our adult lives learning this the hard way, going against the grain of what we thought we knew about money. So how much did you make at this age and what should your goals be? Not only to retire comfortably without having any issues down the line, something else that you should work on when you're in this age group is building something, because remember this is a 20 year gap, is actually building something that lasts forever, a legacy. I saw this great interview with Grant Cardone the other day and he said, you know, I just want to live longer than my body does. And what he's talking about there is impact. When you're alive, the work that you do matters because when you die, your work can still live on to help improve other people's lives. You don't have to be the top guy at your company or an entrepreneur or a business owner. You would simply be the man or the woman that your entire family respects, that no one will forget who you are because you set the example, the mindset and the attitude to achieve anything that you set your mind to. Being the person that everyone looks up to and respects. And if you're looking at just one metric, an annual salary, you won't think about these things. And your mind will be closed to the dreams that died as soon as you limited yourself to the incomes that you see on this screen. So instead of asking yourself what you want your finances to look like when you're in this age group, ask yourself what you want your life to look like. Then work to make it happen. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.